Good morning. Who got them all right? Raise your hand. Welcome this morning. Happy Mother's Day to you mothers. Let's start our service off by singing in the sweet by and by. Let's stand as we sing. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious songs of the blessed and our spirit shall sorrow no more not a sigh for the blessings of rest in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet sure to our bountiful father above we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore please be seated good morning good morning everyone and very very happy mother's day what great time to be surrounded yes Happy Mother's Day. Such a rich blessing to be with each of you, especially the mothers on this day. And I tell you, after Friday and Saturday, the Lord really is shining on this Mother's Day because it was just a perfect May morning. And it's great to be here. Welcome to each and every one of you. Welcome to those who are coming to praise and worship. Welcome to everybody out there, whenever you may or ever you may be watching this live stream. We welcome you as well. Hello, Hannah. Good morning, Roger. Thank you all for doing this. It is so, so wonderful. And let's go in, and I know it's Mother's Day, and it's a big day. And so I'm going to just hit a couple of key announcements. The rest of it will be in your bulletin. Number one, we're not going to pass the plate for offering today. It's going to be a receding offertory. It will be collected on the way out for the offering today. That said, big things that we have coming up that I do want to point out is Sunday, May 15th. That's next Sunday. We'll be having second Sunday lunch. Yeah, so we, we will be having second Sunday lunch on the third Sunday. I, that, that is a very Baptist thing to do, I tell you what. And also a reminder, it's in your bulletin, so I'll be brief on my explanation. We're going to have a very special Memorial Day service. So if you have a testimony or something you would like to present, please follow the instructions and submit that. Take a look at it. want to draw it to your attention. That said, those announcements are over, and we're going to get to an important announcement. I do believe we're about to have Mother of the Year. Good morning and happy Mother's Day. 
Uh, you know that Mother's Day is one of those things that um, <laughs> got really driven by a mother, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, Anna Jarvis's mother was insistent. She was a very proactive woman, and she was pretty insistent that uh, mothers should be honored on a regular basis. Up until that time, it had been kind of happenstance that she used her daughter's political clout to talk Woodrow Wilson into proclaiming a Mother's Day on the second Sunday of each year in May. So here we are. Yay. In looking at um, mothers and what they do for us and all about them, I ran across 18 characteristics of a godly mother that I'd like to share with you today. These might not be really easy to see, but here we go. A godly mother seeks biblical knowledge, fears the Lord, trusts in God, cultivates joyful spirit, gladly does the work God has set before her, keeps a pure heart, is content with what she has, builds up her house, is a wise steward of her home, time, and resources, is a disciple maker, is cheerfully served her family as unto God, lives with unswerving integrity, prays for her children, trains her children, in the way they should go. Practices patience and kindness. If you're a mother, I'm sure that one's exceedingly important. <laughs> Lives with Christ-like selflessness. A godly mother partners with God in raising and training her children. And finally, a godly mother seeks godly counsel. Now you might recognize those because those are all biblically based, right? If you had a mother or are a mother like that, then you were blessed. But as I was looking at this, I thought, you know what? Those things apply equally to fathers. So I would say that if you have a father who matches these attributes and a mother who matches these attributes, then you are doubly blessed. And I can say for a fact that I am doubly blessed. There are a few... Uh, slides here, the quotations, and you have seen them before, but I thought they were worth repeating. There's no way to be a perfect mother and a million ways to be a good one. The next one is one that just really strikes me well. All that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. And this is Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> He's giving quite a tribute to his mom. Successful mothers are not the ones that have never struggled. They are the ones that never give up despite the struggles. A mother is she who can take the place of all others, but whose place no one else can take. The loveliest masterpiece of the heart of God is the heart of a mother. I think you'll agree with that one. Now, there was one that I didn't write down, but it kind of struck my funny bone. I thought it was kind of cute. It said, there is only one beautiful baby born. Each mother has that baby. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. In a similar vein, there is only one nearly perfect mother, and she was mine. <laughs> I hope that you can say the same thing. Each year, the Deaconess Board of Emanuel selects a Mother of the Year. This person is uh, one who has served the church faithfully in many capacities, as well as her own family. Each year, we take a moment to recognize those former Mothers of the Year, and we'd like to do that this year. So when I call your name, if you would stand, we'd like to bring you a little gift of appreciation and everybody remains standing until I finish the list. 
and then I'll let you sit down. Okay? Uh, we've been having a mother of the year as far as date is concerned back into the 1940s. So we've been doing this for a long time. I'm sure we did it before that, but we're about to run out of paper on the page, as you can see. <laughs> so we probably have to drop some old ones off. Um, but these are still with us, and we really appreciate what they still do because they deal, do still serve. Uh, Mrs. Ruth Robinson, if you all would get a rose and a package for them, please. Ruth here? Yes, true. Okay. Yeah. She is standing. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Katie Gillespie, who is now in a nursing home. Mrs. Jan Stoner. Over here. Yep. Mrs. Marilyn Gonch. Uh, the bags. You all forgot the bags. You all forgot the bags. You forgot the bags. <laughs> They'll do it. <laughs> this takes a little while. I get attention. <laughs> oh, Lord, it's a good thing you're bad. still standing. Patty Casto is still, Jan is right there. Patty Casto would be in South Carolina. In South Carolina, yeah. Uh, Jeannie Jones. Brenda Lambert, oh, give it to yourself, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Ruth Ann Painter. Bonnie and uh, Dee are not with us. We have uh, Mae Harkins. Lona McMillian. Sherry Sayer, Sandy Jennings, Sharon is not here today, I believe. That's one. <laughs> Nancy Veazey, you give, give yourself one. your own. <laughs> and the lady who this Hi. year has to give have her crown. Joyce Downing. <laughs> She's hurting from this. <laughs> Hard on her. Each year we also try to keep the, you all can sit down now. Thank you very much. No. Sorry. Uh, that's right. Mother of the Year for 2022. Every year we have several choices, uh, and sometimes one just kind of jumps out at you. And sometimes the people who are serving so well do it very quietly, kind of behind the scenes. But I will tell you that this year's person is not like that. <laughs> <laughs> she is a person who is on fire for the Lord who ser has served Emmanuel for many, many years. And you all really know who she is. As soon as I start describing, it's right a dead giveaway. She has been in children's work for years. She has been in youth work for years. She does adult Bible study at home and also with a group on Zoom. And recently she has become a tour director you recognize her yet? <laughs> I would like to ask the family of the Mother of the Year to bring her forward, please. This year's Mother of the Year. <laughs> Sneak. I know, I know that, I know it. I don't know why you think I'm loud. I didn't say loud. Come on up, you guys, come on. Any of her family who could come up and join her. Come on, guys. Libby, come on up. The uh, blessing of... Um, 
this lady is that she has a, a family that's very supportive of her as well. And that's always makes the world easier for you. Debbie, on behalf of the Deaconess Board, we'd like to present you uh, oh, look, it's large print. print. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> she got that figured out fast. Um, Joyce it's and I have been talking about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a study Bible, and it's very heavy. She's younger than me. She can carry oh, it. Thanks. Here's a bag for you of oh, goodies. Look, and it has Mickey on it. It has it's Mickey. It has Normally we give it. a bunch of flowers. We didn't give a bunch of flowers to her. You've got to show them what you got. She got oh. some uh, gifts. Coloring book. The coloring book is one that was um, created by a local artist, a young oh, lady yeah, who's Andy. a friend of <laughs> Amber's. And me. And it's and are oh, you too? Oh, me. I went yeah. to high school with her. Oh, oh okay. You? Singing praises. Real sweet book. I just said Mark Miller needed this. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get one. Bless mom. And we knew she'd wear this one. Heck yeah. Oh yeah. This mama praise. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Now before I let her speak, she, her daughter is going to give her a little tribute. Oh no, I'm a little afraid. <laughs> well, let's you <laughs> so I, I wrote this really nice thing in my head in the middle of the night, and then I woke up and didn't remember anything. Uh -oh. So um, <laughs> it's cool. Um, th the quote that stuck out most to me is, there's no perfect mother, but there's a thousand ways to be a good one. I have the perfect mother for me. God knew exactly what he was doing when he blessed me with this mother. She's had me in church my entire life. She's shown me what it means to be a follower of Christ and a lover of Jesus and a lover of God. She loves me more than I can ever imagine. She loves not just me, but everybody. Every kid she comes in contact with. She loves people that aren't, yeah. Um, she's a mother to people who've never known one. She's a teacher. She's a wonderful, wonderful lady. And I am so excited. Like, they told me, and I was like, I don't care what i got to do. I've got to be there. I had a cake tasting in Wilmington yesterday, and I drove up this morning to be here. Yeah. So, <laughs> But um, I guess the biggest thing I want to say is um, I am so glad that you guys keep nurturing her and blessing her while I'm gone. But thanks for letting me speak on her behalf. Thank you, Debbie. Oh, thanks. I don't know what to say. I'm really kind of speechless, and that's unusual for me. <laughs> Joyce, I'm sorry you had to give up your crown, but I'll share with you. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you, and I want to say thank you to everybody that's let me mother their children. <laughs> and they got their hands up back there. Thank you. I do love kids, and I love big kids, too. And I really don't know what else to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Dave. Congratulations. I and have a bonus daughter over there. I know you have a bonus daughter. Uh, Katie is the one who grew up in church and was in my Sunday school class for a number of years. And we're very proud of those kids. Um, and yours too. That's right, she was. I would like to uh, invite you when you're leaving to take a rose. We have some roses and the deaconesses will be standing at the doors to distribute those roses. So if you would take one of those and again, a very happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, deaconesses and congratulations, Debbie. Well deserved. And that said, I just will make a brief note that my mother was born and raised in Taylor County, West Virginia, which was the home of Anna Jarvis. So that said, let's go to our call to worship. Psalms 127. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sheep. Lo, children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward 
And as arrows are in the hand of the mighty man, so are the children of thy youth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you in thanksgiving. We humbly come before you as your church, as your people, praising you and thanking you for the role that you have given mothers in this Christian life. And we pray, Father, for strength. We pray, Father, for encouragement. We pray, Father, for direction. And we pray a blessing on all of those great women amongst us. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you in song and to hear the word of God, and we pray that your spirit's in it. In Christ Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's continue our worship and song this morning by standing and singing, Now Thank We All Our God. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things hath done in whom his world rejoices who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us so I'm perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God through all birth be given. The Son and Him who reigns with them in highest heaven. The one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore, for thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore. Come, thy fount of every blessing. Thou fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace, streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me song, melodious song, and sung by flaming tongues above. Praise his name. Upon it, name of God's redeeming love. Hither to thy love has blessed me, thou hast brought me to this place, and I know thy hand will bring me safely home by thy good grace. Jesus sought me when a stranger. Wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, bought me with his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a Please remain standing.
Let's pray over tithes and offerings that will be collected as we recede. Heavenly Father, we humbly thank you for every last dime you bring our way and pray that what we return may be utilized to glorify you and build your kingdom in the Kanawha Valley. We thank you for our opportunity to give, our opportunity to serve, and opportunity to be a blessing to each other and those around us. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There it is. Good morning. It's good to have you with us. We are so glad to have you here on this Mother's Day Sunday celebration. There is so much to be thankful for in each of our lives, and I hope that you have opportunity today to give thanks to those who have been those mother figures in your life. And thank you to each of the ladies here as you have invested your life in people around you and are that mother figure for so, so many. And so we're so thankful. And congratulations to Debbie as a mother of the year here at Emmanuel Baptist. We're in Proverbs 31. And we're going to be reading verses 10 through 31. I know it's a little lengthy. If you are able, I invite you to stand. If not, that's fine. Remain seated as we read those verses today. Proverbs chapter 31, beginning in verse 10. A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth four, far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark and provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She set about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. 
Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. May the Lord bless the reading and our hearing of his word today. Join me in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of today. We thank you for the breath of life that began our day, and as we move through the course of the day, you're traveling along with us, you're helping us, you're guiding us. As we unwrap each portion of the day, Lord, we look forward to what you have in store. And Lord, on this special Mother's Day, we thank you for our mothers. We thank you for those women who have invested in our lives, who have poured into our lives, who have encouraged us, who have prayed for us, who have been there to to cheer us on. We thank you. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunities we have to do the same for those around us, to be able to see the lives that we can make a difference in. And Lord, as we consider your word today, I pray that you'll help us not to race ahead to the events that we are anticipating today nor to be caught in the yesterdays of life, but for these precious few moments, Lord. I pray that you would just help our eyes to be fixed upon you, and may you deliver your message to each of our hearts. Use the simple words I prepared and allow them to be a means by which you speak to each of our lives this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The book of Proverbs begins... In chapter 1, verse 7, with this statement, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. That's where Solomon begins. We need to have this fear for the Lord. Our life, when we walk with the Lord Jesus, begins with this reverence for God where we recognize who He is, where we begin to really realize that He is the creator of all things. Anything and everything we can begin to imagine, and then beyond our imaginations, He is the creator, the designer, the maker. He has made it all. And as Genesis tells us, simply with His spoken word, it all came into being. He is sovereign. He is beyond all that we can begin to grasp or imagine with our minds. And it is God Himself who has created each of us. And as He created us, He's created us with purpose. He's created us to find Him and to walk with Him and to follow Him. He's created us to be in this personal relationship that's not through anybody else, but just us and Him. And He's made that possible through Christ. When we look about living a life of character, as the Proverbs call us to, It's about living a life that fears God, that reverences Him, that acknowledges who He is. Character, friends, is first of all the mental qualities of our lives, the things we think, the things we dwell on, the things that we set as goals and pursue, those things that are of our mind. The mind that fears the Lord is set on Him. And then also character deals not only with the mental qualities, but also the moral qualities. It's the actions, the movements of our lives through each day that reflect the type of character we have. And you might agree with me, there can be bad character and there can be good character. Would you agree? Yeah. There can be. You can have someone who has very poor mental choices and very poor lifestyle, and they are foolish, and they despise wisdom, as Proverbs begins. But when we come to the end of the book of Proverbs, as we see as Solomon lays that all out for us to realize that we must be in this relationship with God, he gives us this beautiful picture of that virtuous woman. That woman who fears the Lord. But as we look at that, it's not just the ladies, but it's to all of us. If we want to be in relationship with God, then it calls for us to live this life filled with good character. And where it begins is being centered in Christ Jesus. It's that time we take to be in God's Word. 
It's that time that we take to be on our knees by our bedside or in our prayer closet or wherever it may be, and we come before God in that time of prayer and communion with Him. It's having that life that is centered on Christ and then thereby being steadfast and strong when the winds and the storms of life blow with all their might. That life that fears the Lord stands firm. A life that is centered in Him. The life that has the relationship between us and God in right order. That's in clarity as we see Him for who He is and we realize how He sees us and desires us to know Him. And what's so wonderful about His love is He keeps calling us. He keeps inviting us. He keeps giving us that invitation to come and to know Him and to walk with Him and to experience life with Him and not to take a step without His presence, to walk hand in hand with His Spirit, to have Him sit on the throne of our lives and we take that place before the throne, obedient, relinquished to Him. And when we get that relationship with God right, then we begin to have the relationship with others in a right order. We can care for others. And we see that here in this, this description. She fears the Lord, and because she fears the Lord, she can take care of her family. She takes care of those who serve in her household. She can take care of things and relationships and business and be successful. When we have our lives centered in Christ, then we can be caring for those around us in a right and proper way because the way we deal with every relationship with those around us is then seasoned with that relationship we have with God. When we walk a life of noble character, our life is described as a committed, intentional life. And friends, I had the privilege of seeing that in my mother. I can recall seeing her take time to be in her bedroom by her bed on her knees praying. And it's moving to hear your mom pray your name. To hear her praying for your heart. And I came to know Christ pretty early, but I remember from the very earliest memories of my life, my mom praying over me. Even when I was smaller and she held me, she would pray over me and she would sing over me her strong alto voice. And she would sing great hymns. And that's probably where I learned a lot of my theology is from the hymns she sang into my heart when I was wee little. Because she loved God and she prayed that I could love Him too. That's the picture that we have here at the closing of Proverbs is a woman who's committed and intentional about what she does. She's not just going through life hoping it works, but taking the time to be intentional and to plan and to seek the Lord's leading and then to engage as the Lord leads to impact the lives of those around them. Which means that person's life is characterized by prayer. Having that conversation with God. Conversation where you speak and you listen. Isn't that wonderful? You know, prayer is not just us giving God our list of what we want. But as we begin to stop in our times of prayer before Him and to adore Him for who He is, to worship Him, to sing to Him, to seek Him, to honor Him, then we're in a position to come before His throne and make those petitions on behalf of others and ourselves. I hope you don't shortchange your prayer life and just rushing in to say, God, I need this, 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 I'll see you tomorrow. But instead that you carve away that time to be quiet and still and at times maybe to be speechless before God Almighty and to begin to capture like Isaiah a glimpse of him sitting there on the throne and to realize he's exalted and he's adored and we get to adore Him. We get to sing to Him. We get to approach and talk to Him and tell Him our heart, which He already knows, but it aligns us so that then we can hear from Him through His Word, through the counsel of the Christians around us. The woman described here is one who gives counsel to her family and her friends, who points them in the way that God would have one to go. And friends, that's the call God gives you, and that's the God God the call God gives me is to live a life that is committed to Him and is intentionally lived with each and every step so that we are found faithful and it will be characterized, supported, and founded in the time we spend in prayer before God. 
We are called to a life of godly character. That is God's calling. That is what He cries out for us to do. But it will begin when we take a position of reverence before God Almighty. We are called to live a godly character. And we have the choice. And that choice will not be easy if we choose it. Because the world and everything about this world will go against you if you want to live a godly life. It'll want to sidetrack you, distract you, put you at a halt. But what God's Word encourages us time and time again is to come back to that centering in Christ, to that place of fearing Him and realizing who He is and seeing Him as the one who redeemed us and saved us and is one day coming back for us so that when we go through this life, we can go through this life living under the direction of His Spirit. Not to the whims of the world or ourselves, but being surrendered to Him and walking in step with the plans He has for our lives. To fear the Lord. To be centered in Him. To care for others around us, family and friends and acquaintances and even strangers. To live our lives committed with an intentionality to be about the work God's called us to. Not getting pulled here, there and yonder, but being focused. To live a life of a dynamic prayer. Serving the Lord, talking to Him, interacting with Him, walking with Him each day. The call of God is to that godly character. And today I want to challenge you, I want to encourage you that we may place our eyes on Him, our Redeemer, our Savior, our Lord, the one who is our King. This morning, I want you to think for a moment about those that have been godly examples for you. Maybe it was a grandmother, maybe a mother, maybe a sister, maybe that neighbor. I can think of Mrs. Merritt when I was growing up in early elementary school, and every week she had a good news club in her living room with all the kids from our neighborhood. Those that just really were interested in seeing how godly character could be instilled in those around them. Think about that. I'm privileged to have my mom. I'm privileged to have had my grandmother on my mom's side. I'm privileged to have a beautiful wife who does this for my children. Think about who that person is. And I want to encourage you in just the next minute to just ask God to bless them this day. Just join me. Just pray with, with me as we pray for those who are those people in our lives. Now I want you to think about the people who you influence. And this isn't just for the ladies. It's for all of us. Because the description of this call to a godly character is good for every person in this room. Who's in your sphere of influence? Who are the people that you will have contact with as far as you know in your plans, your weekly activities this week? Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's a friend. I want you just to think here for a moment and begin to think about who those people are, who your life and their life will probably pass because that's the norm of weekly living.
Does everybody have at least one person? Boy, I'm the only one with one person, and you all have gone to sleep on me today. That's okay. You got one person in mind that you're going to have some interaction with this week? Now, what I'd like to challenge you to do in the next moment is ask God to use your life to help pour into them the truth about Christ and to help set a godly example for them. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the people's lives we will touch today. We thank you for the people's lives that we'll touch tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday into next Sunday. We thank you for those people that we pretty much anticipate because it's a norm of life. Maybe it's our family. Maybe it's our neighbors. Maybe it's a friend. Lord, we thank you for each of those divine appointments that you've already set in order for this week. Lord, we also thank you for those people's lives that we don't realize right now, but our lives will touch this week. And Lord, I pray that we would be first and foremost walking each moment of the day with our hearts and eyes fixed upon you. Lord, we want our mental and moral qualities to reflect you to the world around us. So, Lord, work in our hearts and in our lives. And, Lord, if there are things there that we need to surrender to you, Lord, maybe we come to the realization this morning that we need to take a step into faith and ask you to come into our lives. Lord, you know our needs. We're open books before you. Nothing is hidden from you. Even the things we hide from ourselves from time to time are fully exposed before you, O oh God. And Lord, I pray that for my brothers and sisters today, that we might think about this description that we're given at the end of Proverbs. And as we read those words, and as we think upon those words, to begin to see how in our lives you want to use our lives to begin to touch those around us. Lord, how you want to use our lives to be an example and a witness to the change you've brought, to what it means that we walk with you by faith and not by the sight and the events and the circumstances. Lord, I pray that you would use our lives as a witness that as we walk through our path this week, the footprints that get left will be yours, Jesus, and not our own. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that we might live following you so that our lives will be truly a Christian life and our homes will be a Christian home and our community will be seasoned by that. Lord, I ask. I pray today, Lord, for any that need to make a decision. They've come to a crossroads and they've encountered your truth and your word. And right now your spirit is drawing them to come into relationship with you. To be able to truly know you and to understand who you are in this relationship that you've called us into. You want us to know you not just as our creator, but as our heavenly father. And they need to take that step, asking Lord Jesus into our hearts. Surrendering to your plan of salvation for each one. Confessing our need for you and asking you to come in. Lord, I pray for each of them today that they wouldn't become distracted, that they would be focused upon your Spirit's work in their hearts in this hour. And Lord, they might respond receiving you. 
Lord, I pray today that on this Mother's Day, that you would bless all the women present here and those that may be watching on live stream. And that, Lord, you would bless and use each of them to be witnesses for you. To give them strength and health and energy. And, Lord, may we come alongside them. And may we walk with them. And may we, too, share the wonderful message of salvation through you, Jesus. Lord, we want to reflect you to the world. So use us this day and the days of the coming week. Help us to walk with intentionality, committed before you, bathing each moment in prayer, looking forward to the moments we can still away to just kneel before you and to talk and to share and allow your spirit to speak your words of truth into our lives. Lord, I ask your blessing. Allow this time of invitation to be a time that equips each of us to go forth from this place, leaning tighter into your embrace and walking, reflecting you, having that godly, noble character describe our lives. Thank you. Lord, we thank you. Use these moments as we sing this hymn to draw our hearts where you call us to be. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Stand with me and let's sing A Christian Home. Built firm upon the Savior, where Christ is head and counselor and guide, where every child is taught his love and favor and gives his heart to Christ the crucified. How sweet to know that though his footsteps waver, his faithful Lord is walking by his side. <coughs> oh, give us homes with godly fathers, mothers, who holy place their hope and trust in him whose tender patience turmoil never bothers whose calm and courage trouble cannot dim a home where each finds joy in serving others and love still shines though days be dark and grim O oh Lord our God our homes are thine forever we trust to thee their problems toil and care of love no enemy can sever if thou art always Lord and master there be thou the center of our least endeavor be thou
Again, happy Mother's Day to all the ladies here. We hope that you receive the rose before you leave. If not, do you see one of the deaconesses before you leave. And I pray that God blesses your day with rich blessings. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the day you've given us. We thank you for this opportunity that we get to set aside to be reminded of the mothers that have had such influence in our lives and those that have been mother figures in our lives. Lord, may you bless each of them wherever they may be this day. And Lord, remind us as we walk through the path of life to be godly characters that we may reflect you in all that we do. Lord, we love you. May your blessing rest upon us as we go from this place. May you use our lives to encourage and bless others, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace.